Tabletops will start after the following messages. Are you looking for an actual play podcast with young, hot role players, disciplined professional voice actors, and wholesome content? Well, this isn't that podcast. AARPG is an adults only podcast with interviews, actual play stories where. Uh, excuse me, Matt, why do you sound like you've been chain smoking since you're a toddler? What do you mean? Uh, the voice. You don't have to do that voice, man. I don't? Nah, just tell them that we're a group of old friends who like to get together, hang out, play lots of different types of games, and we want them to feel like they're sitting at the table with us. And they can find us just by searching for the AARPG podcast on their favorite podcatcher and at the AARPGs on YouTube. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Tabletop. Today, we are talking about approaching level 20. What do you do when your group is starting to get to that end of level up phase? Level 17, 18, 19, and of course, that big old 2-0. And of course, we're talking about it with my best friends. Let's go around the table. Uh, let's start with you. Oh, OK. <laughs> Um, hi, it's Franco. Um, I, uh, I'm level 20. All right. <laughs> you? Uh, this is me, uh, your natural 20 friendship, Geo. Oh, what about you over there? Hi, um, uh, my name's Shade, and I, I don't have a joke. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm your host, Nick, and I am perennially 19 again. Okay, let's do it. Um, anyway, let's talk about uh, approaching level 20. Uh, for GMs who are kind of talking uh, about getting close to these really high-level campaigns, no matter what the system is, but we're going to use D&D as sort of like a, a you know... Internal scaffolding for the yeah, conversation. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, what what are your first like big thoughts around getting to this stage of a campaign? Step one, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Coward. <laughs> I, got, I stopped you guys when you reached level 17. It is true. It's like, hey, here you go. Here's your 17th level. We're done. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 this is actually a really good point because Shade and... I was just trolling. No, sure. no. I think that like Shade and like some other GMs that I've played with or like even in this group of the four of us... We've been talking about how high level play sometimes makes it really hard to challenge players and everything. But Shade, you've said multiple times, either off mic or on mic, that this is the time where you're really letting your players feel all of like they're flexing on the world yeah. essentially. And they're able to really make change. They're able to really put their will out there. Um, so can you tell us why? Because out of all of the people I've met, you really love high level play. We're gonna be doing a level 20 Ico Knights uh, sort of yep. thing as well. Can you give us sort of like a, a brief why this in your mind is like such an exciting time in the campaign so whenever someone whenever a player sets out uh they have these these big visions for what's going to happen uh with that character and this is the time when those visions can be a reality um like you said it's it's honestly the most agency driven part of a character's existence is this um is this uh, in fourth tier play, uh, level seventeen and beyond? Mm, yeah. So that's that's you know from a playing player standpoint, that's why I'm interested in it. from a from a GM standpoint. I love it because so you could look at it as okay, well now they're just not going to have any threats or the threats that I throw at them are just going to be these big Sacks balloons. Points, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, great, but that's kind of the same problem you've had all along because yeah. your players will get creative they will think of something at level five that you're like holy shit that just trivialized everything that yeah. i put together for i them drop today. a cow on them yeah, yeah. <laughs> um or or god this is a slog of a battle because it turns out that uh a troll has is is like fighting a cutting board you know yeah. um so hmm. i 
That's I, a good analogy, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I like that. Thank Both you. Franco and I were like, oh, that is, that is true. You. <laughs> um, you know, I, I would say that these are the same problems you've had all along. The difference is that now this game gets way more collaborative and can go fucking off the rails as much as you want it to because there needs to be a grounding at that low level play that there does not need to be at that high level play. It, yeah. Okay, shit's weird. Hey, guess what? A fucking portal just opens up and uh, uh, Eldritch being that you can't even comprehend is here for some reason, maybe drawn by the fact that you're all firing off these spells and that's hungry for that shit. Deal with that now, yeah. you know. I would never do that to a, a group of level threes. Can yeah. I paint a picture using plagiarism? I mean, I would. I was just... <laughs> I mean, Could, nope. <laughs> uh, uh, we're gonna come. I'm gonna take the audience over here for a sec. Come on, audience, let's huddle up. Let's talk. You and me. This is, this is Geo's thing. Geo likes to huddle. Yeah. So if you need help, like, they talk conceptualizing about. like the tiers of play, I want you to picture in your mind uh, the greatest superhero team of all time, the Fantastic Four, not the movies, the comics. If you think about very debatable, the Fantastic Four. <laughs> At like low tier play, they're fighting the mole man. You know, he's underground. He's got a subterranean thing. They go they explore an exotic locale, but they go back to the Baxter building. And then you've got, you know, your Doctor Doom stuff, your your meat. You know, they're high. They've got their levels. They're fighting a, a powerful bad guy. It's a long standing campaign. And now here, fourth tier, we're like, okay, they've seen the Silver Surfer. They've got to deal with Galactus. Yeah. Now they've got to go off world. They've got to deal with this like major cosmic threat. And, you know, sometimes they might meet uh, Jack Kirby as God. Uh, and that's just, you know, that's fourth. That's that's fourth tier. Uh, so just take I, that. I, as you, okay, I don't hold on. Um, like, so, all right, guys, let's break the huddle because it looks like everyone's <laughs> coming into our hey, thing. Sorry, um, just right, breaking so in so here. Hey, let me, back, let me into this huddle. The only, uh, the only comics I read are Donald Duck comics, so I don't have any frame of reference. <laughs> I, I got that about you. Yeah, Can sorry. I um, <laughs> ask a quick question, though? Because for me, this is such a, like, trepidatious time in a campaign because and this is hotly debated your question is taking such a long time <laughs> hey you got huh? a 10 minute t huddle i get a five minute question you don't even know what you talked about <laughs> like um so you were talking about jack kirby seeing god all that kind of stuff i was talking about the fantastic four yeah but yeah. this sort of thing does happen in uh games as well that you're starting to re, re like breach into like multi-planner yeah. sort of things like you said eldritch beings are coming you're doing world changing magic to me this is a time of ending because like i feel as though once you once you taste that uh you know eldritch danger uh, a group of bandits are never really going to cut it again it's a great you know band I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so eldritch danger I would, I would say that um yeah of course it is it is the time of ending that's why uh most d20 no, that's not true D D ends at level no, 5e ends <laughs> at level 20. Uh, it is the end game, right? Yeah. Um, also, great, great uh, huddle you did there. I think that you... Yeah, everyone left yeah, that huddle. For, they yeah. all smiles thanks on their faces. That. Um, because it, it does hit exactly what fourth tier play is. It should be the ending, but... Um, Our new God beginning. damn it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I was trying to think of someone to quote, but I can't. Every ending is a beginning, right? Right. Because... This is also the chance. I said that uh, this level of play is the most collaborative period. Mm -hmm. This is the point where your character, your player characters get to now build their own shit. Yeah. And you should encourage that as a GM. You should, uh, you know, say, okay, you are, you know, fighting these eldritch beings. You're you're going to fucking take over for God or something. Yeah. I mean, what does that mean for that character? And yeah. and that's some great... And at this point, shit. they should have already built a couple of universities and castles and stuff. Probably. In the yeah, other earlier that money. forms yeah. of tier, yeah. uh, which is what my player... They're level 11 right now, and they've had a university for a couple of years now, or for a couple of levels. Yeah. And also, they just uh, got a plot of land uh, for saving a, a lord. Nice. Uh, and now they are knighted. Ooh. So, and this is... You know, that's a that's a lower tier of play than the tier we're talking yeah. about. <laughs> yeah. gonna, and that's to, pretty big stuff. Yeah. To double back on what you were just saying and what we talked about in another episode, if your players were going to collaborate collaboratively, like create holidays and stuff, <laughs> this would be the levels in which they earn that right to sure. inject what they sure. want into yeah. the world. Because if you're a level 18, 19 hero of the realm, 
obviously if you decide, hey, that's what if we put money and we celebrated like this thing that we did mm-hmm. and that could carry on down the road. Yeah. The oh, sorry. And I was just gonna like another thing would be this is also a good time to start thinking about your next campaign. Correct. Yeah. It's like what are these characters going to leave behind for the heroes that that that, that come along after them? Yep. Yeah. And this is I think this is something that people like long ago used to do or whatever like what you could do is now that you're level 20 and you're doing like extra planar shit like you could build your own dungeon hey yeah. now you're the dm Hell <laughs> yes 100 <laughs> percent. this this yeah. is again it's the most it's just the most exciting and the possibilities are limitless yeah at that level of play Okay, so we've talked about sort of what we should be thinking about. Why don't we start talking about how to guide your players? Like, you're, you're basically, they have a really firm sense of their character at that point. You uh, hope. Yeah, you hope. And you've built a while towards this. Uh, as a GM, what should you be doing for your players specifically to kind of help them into this last tier of play? Could I answer a question you didn't ask? Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, what, is, what, is, what, what not is this podcast if it's not a question and non-answer? <laughs> I was gonna, and maybe we'll talk about this more later. I just want to say it now while I'm thinking about it. Uh, as you are getting closer to fourth tier level of play, if you don't want to enter fourth tier level, uh, you could go with some people's route of ending the game. But also, you could also look at Why levels are you at me, as because uh, I'm I'm just not looking at Franco. Because uh, you could also sort of like remember that levels in in the world of a of a game. We'll say D and D. You go from level one to level twenty in a roughly like what you're gonna like a, a f- weeks, a matter of months. If you're thinking about this like in game time, if you're not doing a lot of downtime, it can happen. Uh, levels could be very temporary things. I'm like, okay, you guys don't adventure for a little while. You know, you do a time jump and you sort of go back down levels a little bit. And that you can stall in that way yeah. is all I wanted to, yeah. to say. I- I, I'll, I'll support that. I, I mean, we've talked – I think one of the very earliest conversations we had was about what do we do with that player who comes in with this This should be a level 20 character, but it's level one, dude. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we, we talked about, yeah, that's a retired adventurer who is starting over essentially. And I, I think that's a lot of fun personally. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. it's something I'm you want to talk like with. Right now. Yeah, like, you are. My, my character should – at with his backstory coming in, be like a level, level seven or yeah. level 10 or something, yeah. but is now learning how to fight again because he had his leg chopped off. And so he's learning how to fight with this new appendage that he has. Right. So it's, it's also, like if, a, you're, if you're a baseball player, but you set out for three seasons, you don't go back at the same level you left at. Yeah, you have sure. to go. You have to you have to find your groove again. You have to build those muscles back up. Depending how good you were, you may be paid better than you were originally. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, no, I, I think that that's a lot of fun. You do want to talk with your player about that, obviously. Like, yeah, that was people. People would probably hate that. Yeah, yeah they they yeah. will be angry. Um, but th- there could be some fun on like. It's not as a surprise, I, obviously. I, I yeah. did know of somebody who once made a dungeon, and this was a very high level dungeon. But like, he he was talking about how. Yeah, there were these eggs, and if the players touched the eggs, these things would jump out, and they were level eaters. So if they like, <laughs> if they essentially attach themselves onto you, they would drain your levels. So you would go There's from like level, level 90. drain. Yeah, like that's, a, ghost, that's an old thing. Ghosts yeah. used to yeah. do yeah. that. Ghosts yeah. and so, undead could drain your levels too. Yeah, yeah. so it's like yeah. there are ways to do that. I think that that is probably a way that your character is gonna be like, or your players are gonna be like, I fucking hate you. Yeah, <laughs> the more than like, hey, you took a break and now you've like lost a little bit of your step kind right. of thing. The hobby is at large has moved away from that, but yeah. <laughs> I say go back to it. Your yeah. players are lucky to be in your game and you should be able to do whatever <laughs> you want. Hey, there's a DM shortage in New York City. Yeah. Or something. There you go. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think this is why – sorry, this is not about level 20 play. But, like, um, you know, there's a lot of games out there that do not use levels. Yeah. And, yeah. like, progress is measured in different ways. And I think, like, the reason that players are resistant to losing levels is because when you gain a level, you just – you just like get another box of features mm-hmm. to like pick up and you're mm-hmm. like, oh, cool. These are mine now. And then you have like a little thing and now it's you and you've like earned these things. And so that means you get to keep them like yeah. in a video game or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so like when it's something instead where you're like, you know, like a witch 
touched you and now you have like you know your arm is like a like a tree branch like vine and now you can you have reach on that arm yeah. and that's like the the special feature that you now have or something yeah, like that yeah. And it's like, yeah, and then you get that vine chopped off, and then it's like, well, they got to find a new arm. <laughs> you know, it's like it's just like different ways of progressing that aren't just tied to. And like even you know talking about like twentieth level play, like it can be shit like that too. It's like once per day you can you know turn into an immortal flame being or something yeah, like yeah. that, or you know like if you uh, close your third eye or you open your third eye and you can like see through time and uh, cast time stop or something like that. Yeah, yeah, you know you can you can do these like high level things in games that don't have leveling in it totally i mean like in um our monster of the week game uh i did kind of different things for both of you like for you mm -hmm. franco i turned you into a mundane because yeah. I, I was like <laughs> your fucking powers are gone bitch <laughs> uh and you got them back and everything but it was like a really fun little moment there yeah. and then for you shade i turned you into the divine because yeah. you were sort of like re actualizing yourself kind of yep. thing um so there are different things you can do i like you, you said you made I, eye contact and then skipped over talking about me completely uh, in the game. you were not in that game that that is, question mark? <laughs> i am so offended uh for you you're um, like i told um, you, you like oh for uh, i did that to you and then i'm sure i did that to you and you made eye contact with me like i have nothing for you fuck you well i've never with played your eyes a, to be fair and don't take this as a i've slight. never been fair a day in my this. life uh, I've never gotten uh, through a campaign long enough as your DM in which you have gotten to a high enough level in that because either we stop playing the game or your characters fucking die or whatever, you know, something changes. Um, so well, we haven't gotten to a high level dialed. play with, okay. with you yet, which would be interesting. Well, I wonder how you would... How, how would you would be? Oh, Has sorry. anyone actually here DM for Daniel at a high level play? Yeah, yes. 16th level. 20th oh, level. Oh, yeah, both of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, how, how, <laughs> to be fair, for I know, any, it was a very, any, it was I mean, a one short shot. stuff. Gotcha. I mean, but they go for, you know, six sessions at most, three at least. So, yeah. that's. When you, and I could have never. Danny's character oh, is just sad about six. getting divorced. So, oh, yeah. I don't think he really got to do a lot of his fighter stuff. And also, yeah. you always, um, with your melee characters, which is the ones that I've seen at high levels. You've always like mixed in other things, but you're like, I don't like how barbarians work, or I don't like this fighter. I want to have magic, and so you are always. Daniel like misses a prestige classes. What is? Yeah. I miss your... gestalting, and I miss prestiging. Uh, yeah, gestalting. That's what I would bring back. Yeah. I, I agree with you. What I'll... is gestalting exactly? It's when it's you, when take, you mix classes uh, and subclasses. So basically, so basically, if you wanted to be a fighter rogue, mm -hmm. you would get the features of both a fighter and a rogue, mm -hmm. and you would get the higher die types or the higher saves of each class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, with proficiency bonus now kind of takes away a lot of yeah, what but that like was. you would get like the the hit points of a fighter. Okay, for but example. the you get skill, all the best but the skill of selections of a correct. Rogue. You get all the best stuff from each class. Oh, that's very powerful. Yeah, it's yeah. super powerful. It's like you say they, <laughs> they say it's you're way more powerful than a a single a single class character. Yeah, but you're not as strong as two characters. Correct. Above, because the sure, action yeah. economy breaks. Are you yeah. are so was was this like you reach level like let's say you reach level seventeen or something you're no. doing this? You oh, you then, just you, you if just, you're doing you the gestalt, you do it from the beginning. Yeah, oh. from the beginning. yeah, yeah. And do you have to split your levels, or is it just no. like no. as you level, you it, level both? Is of that them? three five or what? Yeah, yeah that was in okay. the third, third. As you get, yeah, you're a level one fighter rogue, and you're a level two fighter rogue. Yeah. Mm. So like, I mean, you could do this in five E. You, you can. Could just, it's like, not yeah. as easy. You could get to like level <laughs> seventeen or whatever and start multi-classing and have like rogue level one, level two, and then just keep going. That's where like I you have it. It. your <laughs> fighter twenty, rogue twenty. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, yeah. you can do that. It's just definitely not as easy. It's way yeah. more cumbersome. The first it's... I I got introduced to gestalting kind of early. And it has made me hate multi-classing where I have to choose yeah. classes. Yeah. I, I like having both. Multi-classing is, is a lot of trade-offs. Yeah, it really is. Kind of a fun way, but also kind of like a, this is weird. And yeah. prestige is essentially you get even more specialized mm -hmm. in something. Is yeah, which they changed into just the archetypes, I yeah. think, for this yeah. edition. Okay. Yeah, largely. And in, in Pathfinder, since everything is like pretty modular, does the gestalting kind of work that I've way never too? Tried. I've never tried to do it in Pathfinder. Mm -hmm. okay. This Pathfinder like does feel like you can make a very specific yes. type because they've character. broken it all down into feats and stuff. Yeah. And you, yeah. you can yeah. make your character very like uh, very a la carte in Pathfinder. So, speaking it's of cool. making your character stuff, let's go back to that question yeah. I asked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when you get to like a level like 
politely, you know, I politely exactly, roll rubbed you, over. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> when you get to like level 17 and such, how do you as a GM start guiding people into that level of play? Like you were saying, your level 11 has a bunch of like land and a university now and stuff. And so you've been kind of guiding them into the third tier of play. What is the thing that you want to do as a GM to really get them into the mindset of this fourth tier? Uh, we're that... definitely ending at level 13. <laughs> I I guess I'm always preparing them for like a Ragnarok I don't uh, thing at that at that level of flex. I'm like, okay, the world's going to end or you're going to be heroes. I never really thought about like universities and plots of land. Yeah. I don't suggest it like the heirloom, but the heirloom and like heritage stuff, but I've never actually done it. Because yeah. the only game I've ever gotten up to that level was our Gilded Canaries game. Yeah. So that was my first experience running a high-level game like mm -hmm. that. So you want to you want to expand their focus uh, first and foremost. Um, you know, they still need something to anchor onto. Mm -hmm. You always want to give them an anchor. I don't think. It necessarily needs to be, uh, you know, a cataclysm or something like that. I mean, that's often the crutch of many and most games. Uh, and there, and there's, you know, I use them. Yeah, they're, they're I had fantastic. a crutch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fight they're, me. Uh, nope. <laughs> um, but because uh, I'm saying that that's that's Rage a walkers. <laughs> that's that is a um, a specific focus on most games, but you could shift it instead to um exploration yeah I, you know for me like one of the ways that i i think that i try to shift my player's mindset at this sort of level is instead of like a king or something being like you you have to go do this like you, you're helping the realm you have to go do this at this level the king is like what do we do yeah like make the decisions and i'll do whatever you tell yeah. me to do yeah and then that's the soft power behind yeah, exactly. the crown. <laughs> yeah so it becomes the thing of like a gm almost like it becomes harder to prep this way but mm -hmm. i think it's also sort of like this is the thing that's happening all of the people in power kind of look to you and say what do we do and yeah. like you make the decision so like that can g get to the point of you know you guys are at a war council and you're moving armies around. Yep. You know what I mean? Like mm. that sort of thing that you're all sort of going in. Like, like you guys did in exactly, my game. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Like, you were only level seven, 16. You can do this whenever you want. <laughs> you yeah, can. exactly. You can. Honestly, like I think the general flow is like first tier, your hometown heroes, second tier, your region heroes, yep. third tier, your like your wanted nation. <laughs> your wanted then, criminals. Fourth tier is like you're now like Everyone. world hopping, yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. That's like that's that. generally the world idea. Top. You're world, yeah, hopping. world hopping. Yeah, but because again, in my games, you guys, you, uh, you guys world hop pretty much yeah. from go. Because um, at so this really... level of play, unless you're doing an extra planner campaign, mm -hmm. which is totally sure fine, yeah, um, it's fine. But it's I, okay, Shade. Yeah. This is not an intervention. No, it's it's fine. <laughs> but it's I fine. feel like at this level of play, you you are sort of freeing the the players from the yeah like um uh chain of command almost yeah um and are saying like you are the commanders now and i'm gonna respond it's almost like kind of a switching of roles in some way because now you're saying like now you guys are driving the story and i am responding because i've made the situation but, <laughs> but this is but again you know you can do this at any tier of play yeah this is the point where you should be doing it you can still craft a, a special narrative for them, but this is also the point where they've earned that right, like you said she's, earlier. She's pointing at us in at, turn, trying yeah, to yes. uh, assuage us <laughs> like, a, like a dad. Here's the thing about things that I say. Everything I do is like sad. a dad. Is that I don't necessarily believe them Listen, later. you can play the video game first, and then whoever wins can sit out the next game and play with the other person. Franco, <laughs> tell them it's multiplayer. Just keep the other one turned off, okay? <laughs> oh, classic. <laughs> that was me. Franco. I'm the baby. <laughs> I I think that I maybe do this too early in a lot of cases where I'm just like, all right, what do you guys think you should do? Rather than like, this is happening, you're responding. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's just me. <laughs> it's, all, it's all style, baby. So, it's all style, baby. Um, but, you know, I... 
Don't deliver my lines better than me. Tortles all the way down. Baby! Baby! Another another thing you could do to kind of like, you know, I I like this idea of... uh, Shay just shouldering forward. The world (laughs) world is, uh, you know, asking you what to do. (laughs) This is also a time uh, where you can still keep it in the material plane, but there are extra planar forces maybe. Uh Uh-huh. This time, uh, where... They're just trying to get you on their team mm. because Asmodeus comes to you not as like I'm going to destroy you puny whelp. It's yeah. more like Asmodeus. Asmodeus. How can yeah. I convince you to do what my I bit? Need oh, to do? Yeah. yeah. Where it's like, oh, you're. They're trying to force you into the decision of archdevil or archangel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're like, ah, oh, what if I decide to be an avatar of the material plane? Yeah. Right. So like, you know, that can that can kind of be a, a direction you can go with it. Um, other ways that you can kind of help guide your your players uh, to this point, you can begin to ask them about the corners of the map. Yeah. Um, you know, that's uh, a place where maybe maybe the world that you've built is, is your baby and you don't want to have them fuck it up in some way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there are corners and borders that you have not touched as a, as a GM. This is where those high-level players, hmm. player characters can... So you build your world wrong. <laughs> Yeah, you sure. you know what I don't you know I'm gonna I'm gonna blast you right now. Uh, <laughs> you came in Fucking right before blast him. You, you came in right before this recording, and you were like, you know, I started thinking about this thing that we have been focused on for months Ugh. in my game that I'm running, and you know how did that actually work? And I'm like, yeah, you're thinking about the cosmology. The thing that you fucking start with. <laughs> wow. Uh, so anyway, so first of you all, you were wrong. To the ground. Yeah. Second of all, you're wrong about everything. <laughs> third, third of all, you don't start with the cosmology. You, you so do. You start with the town. You don't start big and go down. You start down and slowly. Oh, build so I'm out. sorry. You're making the point that I was making. Then at some point, you're going to get to a level of play where you didn't build that. You should have built it all before he you started him. playing. Oh, he tricked whoa. him. Whoa. He just no, did still, Daniel still so wrong. hard. You sh- I, no, you're all wrong. <laughs> Listen to my words. Hey, re- we'll so be right you- back after this break. <laughs> How do you fix a quandary? There's only one solution. Portal Quandary is a Dungeons and Dragons real play comedy, drama, dramedy, dramedy podcast about a party of mismatched heroes trying to do just that. Join Dungeon Master Tyron Cross as he hurls our Melbourne based party into a mystical world full of strange creatures, stranger people, and strangest of all, unanticipated self discovery. Gross. Listen to Portal Quandary now on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Episodes released tri weekly. Hey everyone, it's me, Nick, from the Tabletop Podcast. When I'm not hosting, I'm thinking about ways to create a better podcast for you guys, and I think I landed on something pretty fun. In fact, if you go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash tabletop and join for as little as a dollar a month, you can get access to a new episode a month that we're going to start putting out. In fact, we're going to be calling this one Wild Magic, I think, in that we're going to talk about anything and everything that interests us. Not just TTRPGs, though there will be a lot of that. It is truly unhinged, and if you are a fan of the podcast and all of the hosts, you're definitely going to want to be on it. Uh, We're thinking of dropping these at the end of each month, so join our Patreon today. That is patreon.com slash tabletopped. Oh, and there's going to be so much more coming out in the new year there, so don't miss it. Sign up today. You start small. Welcome <laughs> back, everyone. To and then you build it out, but you should build it out completely before your players come there. Hardest you know, disagree they of my entire fucking life. <laughs> As you can tell, at, on tabletop, we don't have just one opinion. Yeah, it. No. <laughs> we all hate each other's opinions <laughs> to the core. And the fact that we're friends is a miracle. <laughs> now, that's so, why we have so many ongoing games. <laughs> that's why. That's why we have this podcast because we all just kept arguing. 
thing. We were yeah. like, what if we recorded it and other people listened to it? Yeah, we're four guys with a podcast. <laughs> this is the first time ever that this has happened. Oh, uh, anyway, so we've talked a little bit about what you can start to do to start bringing your characters into this level of play. Now, as a GM, what is like? What does prep look like in yeah. this time? So you are you are trying to prepare something that will. Uh, get your players invested, but also challenge them at a fourth tier level of play. What are you thinking about when you make these sessions? And I'm not talking about storylines or going extra planner or anything like that. Like, how are you building things to challenge characters that are very powerful? I'm building a new campaign for level one characters. <laughs> when I was and in, I'm going to sit out for the rest of this. When, when I was in sixth grade, I had a book report that was due, and I didn't do it. <laughs> done the story. And so I ad lived my way through it. And I think wow. at this stage of, of play, uh, I would just, I wouldn't really do a lot of, I don't know if I could prep for that. I sorry, I just have to uh, improv my way through these challenges. So, sorry, so you think, so you're saying that you didn't build it all the way out then? No, it's built. <laughs> We're talking but about the specific challenges of the session. How are you going to challenge you your didn't, players? You see, you didn't build every. It is built. Yeah, the world is built. <laughs> the world exists. It's a foundation. <laughs> Come at me, son. I, I, I think Gio's got the, the correct way of it. You need to be more loosey-goosey about this, be ready to improv. Um, you could still have some broad stroke ideas, and you should. As far as challenges go... Um, I, could, I, wanna, I just want to interject this yes. as we're talking about challenges, and it's going to be to your point. Mm -hmm. But I think at this point, a non-planned death is going to really hurt player mm -hmm. happiness. Mm. That's an interesting point of view. I, You've I, made it so you far. Killing? What? Who are you killing? One no, I'm just like saying if like your players what, and you're challenging them and one of your players like hit zero HP and they die and it's like right at the end, they've come so far, they've gotten so close to like that twentieth game. But in the end it doesn't even matter. And in the end it doesn't even matter. See, I I'm gonna I'm gonna just throw out there Yes, I think that I, I think you're right, but also this is the level where they have the most say in how that goes down because Again, this is where you're they getting get real extra planner about shit. Yeah. They got there's, there's tons of ways to revive them. You could yeah, okay. literally go to the hells or wherever the fuck that character ends up. Wow. I just assumed hells. I'm sorry. Your hero uh, should go to heaven. <laughs> or you're playing wrong. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's that. there's some interesting things that can, can happen there. Um, we all know no all one goes to heaven. Go no to one heaven. does like a game where they go to heaven. Everything's hell. Oh, no. All the time it's hell. Dante's inferno. No, no, no. Drag me to hell. The all dogs evil go to hell. dead. Hey, dog. <laughs> where's where's the heaven theme? Oh, do you mean Oh, uh, yeah. It's Dante's purgatory and Dante's paradise. <laughs> no one talks about those books. <laughs> um, but I will say, as far as adventures go, absolutely. Mount Celestia in in D and D, one of the best adventuring. Places. Never been there. No one talks about it. Well, we will go there. It's one of the best adventuring places. Amazing. Elysium, amazing. Like, there are wonderful uh, places to adventure in extraplanar heavens. It might exist, like but no one goes. Like, heaven exists, but no one goes there. Mount Everyone Celestia, goes to hell. I will let you know Mount Celestia is, was a central playing spot for a good while. You know what would be like, really cool for higher level play is, like, the strength of their will and their strength of their beliefs are so strong that if you are doing a Planescape thing that can, like, drag full Borderlands into I had different to 100% stop myself from saying that exact thing because that's what yeah. that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I was like, no, he may be, yeah, he's going to Planescape. Because okay. <laughs> that's what Planescape is. Um, <laughs> that's so. very fun. So this is an ad for Planescape. This is another ad for Planescape. Uh, yeah, go I check out our episode about that. it. Pretty good. Um, I was yeah, going to so say how challenges. You, yeah, challenges because... Uh, you know what? Fucking... Just, Fucking's a challenge. I, I, <laughs> I think that the challenges should be... <laughs> <laughs> I can't support what I just said. <laughs> I think the challenges should, should be uh, quandaries rather than, oh, this is a difficult enemy to beat. Um, this is also where, you know, maybe your enemies don't have Should always be just, uh... <laughs> oh yeah, like do we use our power yeah. to make the these things do what we want them to do? Blue these blue things blue being people. people. <laughs> yeah. Do we, are we misusing we our power? <laughs> are we? <laughs> you mean do we? There. Do we decimal? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, are we using our power for good? Are we using it for bad? Um, things like that. You should also, for the enemies, I think they should be 
Uh, if you really want to have a challenging enemy, you should look towards borrow from other systems like Monster of the Week where, okay, yeah, you took that monster down to, you know, that lich down to zero HP or whatever. It's not dead, though, and it's going to rise again here in a clock. You could do, like, more World of Warcraft type of stuff yeah. where it's like you have killed the Lich King, but someone has to sit on the throne. Yeah. You know, that kind stuff of stuff. Stuff like that. Uh, it becomes a little bit... Sacrifice. Is it, is it Albion? Hmm? The World of Warcraft. Is that Albion? Oh, no, it's um, Azeroth. Azeroth, Azeroth yeah. right. Yeah. And all of the worlds are, like, actual, like, creatures in World of Warcraft. They're, like, yeah. spirits. It's very weird. Anyway. Aww. But yeah. sacrifice is, is the key word. And that's also... Um, What's Albion? I don't know. Is it? I would also really, like, to challenge characters Azeroth. socially, I think that it would be interesting to get to a point where just, like, normal NPCs are, ev- are either worshipful mm-hmm. or incredibly scared of you yeah, it's a social it challenge it yeah, you yeah. showed yeah. up yeah. you showed up wearing the wrong uh outfit yeah <laughs> but it's like you, you're overdressed like you could go and like a pickpocket runs by and you like grab Incinerate someone them. <laughs> yeah but oh. you and you just obliterate them on accident because you're so powerful at well, that point and it's like uh and everyone's yeah. so scared of you and you're like oh shit <laughs> and that yeah that that begins to rise up nations because you have now just you've grossly misused your power and now whole a whole city a whole country a whole world is now against you Mm -hmm. you've become the villain you could also go with um the fact that everyone sees you as a benchmark Mm. and and people are trying to they want to take you down oh yeah you're you're constantly under threat like yeah you have all this power but that means people are constantly trying to Mm -hmm. take it because there is the the kind of cliche but it's also like interesting to me of like I guess the the cliche of almost like a dojo challenger where someone like yeah. shows up. And you're a like, gym leader now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where it's like um, you're, you know, you are just like, you know, in this king's retinue or whatever. But every week, a, like a, a champion of some area is like, I, I challenge you. And then you're like, no, man. And they're like, I'm not going to like wait until you're ready. I'm just going to attack you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we because... didn't. Uh, this place used to have two gyms, but then the psychic gym came over and kicked our asses. Yeah. Yep. There you go. And then on top of that. Your characters may be invulnerable, but you've had 17 levels to have them develop relationships. Be the monster that lives inside of your heart and steal those NPCs. Attack other parts of their character <laughs> sheet. And this, like might their be, this might be wrong, but you guys ever watched uh, Afro Samurai? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I believe it was there was two bandanas. And if you had the first bandana, the, the the second bandana where what was hunting you down to kill mm-hmm. you, but everyone wanted to take on the second bandana, where, and that's kind of where you are yeah, at this tier yeah. of play. You're like, oh, if I can take that power, then I could go and become a god, or yeah. I can move on to the next step. And so you kind of become the target that everyone's after. One hundred percent. That would be an interesting thing to to give to your players too, of like, you are anointed by deity x or whatever that like deity x <laughs> that you are that you are on your way but people who want to get there they want to take your place essentially like what you were saying but it could just be like your character is still good you're not like turning them evil you're not turning them against anyone but it just turns to like the the power holders in societies and stuff are all just like this is we we need you. Yeah, to like go how away. many times can you send a knight who wants to go challenge this person before they stop dealing with it diplomatically? Go, oh, yeah. another one, and just start killing people yeah. because it's like they're annoyed that this keeps happening. Yeah, yeah. and and I mean you have to definitely balance that because you don't want to actually annoy your players. Like, mm-hmm. oh god, another fucking silly bandit king or something like that. Like, you got to find that balance. It's but... Like, what is there a cop on every corner every time I commit a crime? I would also say that <laughs> yes, <laughs> which is something I established yeah, at the beginning of Waterdeep. <laughs> also, I would say that there's a, a little tool that I like to use that I found. I forget what her name was, but a very cool person on YouTube you can't call someone a tool <laughs> uh, okay wow. here we go but it's uh, the rumor jar essentially uh, oh, yeah, where yeah, yeah. when i was playing i'm playing it with a, a work game that i do and it's like very local it's within one city so everyone kind of hears these rumors and i pull them out to see how M- npcs feel about the the party but once you start getting to this level of play 
the rumors are like legends and they are so influential that not only maybe they create festivals and holidays, but maybe they also like create whole areas that are hostile to the players and yeah. stuff like that. Just because Ooh. of like a, a story that was told in a, a certain way, like you killed a, a dragon that was attacking a town, but that was the dragon oh my God. that protected and like you, this, you know, and you're, the character has a specific like look or vibe or yeah. haircut or mm -hmm. way of like manner of dress or whatever and then everyone that wears that type of manner of dress or like has that trait is like persecuted or attacked yeah. or whatever or barred yeah. from the city or if it's like maybe you have a um a whole party of like non-human uh people and then all the humans are like we're scared you know what i mean yeah. like the, this group of like non-humans has become so powerful that we're like terrified. Because yeah, I it's mean, almost it's as if like we representation would that, be important. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, uh, like, but, because you know. I'm, I'm thinking specifically about yeah. a world that I'm playing in, where uh, the Dragonborns, their like society is very survival of the fittest, just based on the region mm -hmm. that they're from. Um, and so when people encounter Dragonborns, even ambassadors, they're like, "Hey, man, like, let's let's be chill," because like, if you challenge them in some way, their culture has like they'll one up it. Yeah, they'll yeah. be like, "I I uh, need to because that." <laughs> That is how I've survived this long. Oh, that's how rednecks work too. I'm from that. <laughs> it's true. You, you, you accidentally <laughs> challenge someone. Great. Now you're in a fight and you don't even know why. Yeah. Um, God, I was going to say a couple of other fun, <laughs> silly ideas. Um, yeah. You know, straight up, there's a uh, group of fey or doppelgangers or something that are 100% going around impersonating you and utilizing nice. your... That's oh, great. Yeah. Identity yeah. theft is a yeah. crime. It is, Jim. That's and uh, that's in a lot of animes, too. That, yep. And it's one of my favorite things of, like, they, they're like, what? We're, you know, someone's trading our, on our name. And then they somehow encounter the group that just like is like an, uh, like an ugly version of all of the <laughs> characters. And it's like, oh, wait, these guys? <laughs> <laughs> these guys? Um, and then also, uh, if you're familiar with Kuatoa, uh, Kuatoa are these wonderful fish folk that have been influenced by years of subjugation by mind flayers and other eldritch means and they can essentially worship an idea into existence Ooh. um you, you were talking about that. rumors and legends yeah what did they hear about you yeah and suddenly there is a terrible representation of you around out yeah. in the world because at that point you are sort of doing like people are th giving enough psionic energy towards mm -hmm. you that they've made sort of like these demigods that are mm -hmm. like inverse and it's it's you. not you maybe or you could even um it's shadow link yeah, yeah shadow link it's kind of how uh, some gods might work yeah yeah 100%. Nick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys want to start Pantheon's Part 2? I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, I'm always ready to throw down all that. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of fun little things that you can do and guide your, your players with. But there's one thing we haven't talked about. And, uh, you know, before we get too, too far into this episode, because I think we're, we're coming yeah, we're up on, what, 40 close. Yeah, right we're now? Getting, we're getting close. So Time's pitfalls. So what, what are pitfalls that... Yeah, I think that the big pitfall for me is um, that hit point bloat you were talking about. Mm -hmm. And what I think that a lot of people take high level characters and then they're just like, let's just make problems that they were dealing with at level five the bigger version of those problems. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it's more interesting, just Speak variety. More. So, like, if let's say uh, at level one, you're dealing with like uh, a group of bandits around, mm -hmm. at level six, you're dealing with a group of bandits and a bandit king who like has heard of you at level 11 you're you know thinking of like you know the thieves guild that like commissioned the bandit king to do mm. stuff and you're just kind of playing the same adventures except at a bigger scale yeah like i yeah. think that what you level need 17 to... is the bandit god <laughs> the bandit god yeah <laughs> the concept um, of banditry <laughs> <laughs> you were playing the concept of banditry uh but like i think that when you get to higher Jesus levels Christ, that's it's fun. just like be careful of variation of play so like you, you, they have a lot of features now they have a lot of spells they have a lot of stuff make them use it in more different ways that they haven't been able to use it before like time stop is cool instead of always using it in combat maybe have them like need to break in somewhere and break out being undetected and they time stop and then you literally have like a timer of them trying to get through a, a maze or a puzzle it's only like time stop sucks in combat <laughs> time stop is 
Not that great. It's like, well, that's like what max 24 seconds. Yeah. Like maybe there's like a checkpoint or whatever. And they're trying to get through the checkpoint undetected. Mm. And then you're asking them like, what, how do you want to do this? And they can say like, I guess I want to fight all of these people, but they could also try to use like their utilities and their feats and all that stuff that they've like slowly earned to try to do something mm. else, you know? The number of times I've used my phone bill to get through a ch skill challenge. Your phone bill? Your utilities. <sighs> Good. <laughs> um, so, Shade, any pitfalls that you can think of? Yeah, I, I think that the – so one of the biggest pitfalls yeah. is my favorite thing uh, about these games, and it's oh, I just don't want to deal with that, and so they teleport away. Mm. Um, you know, we're already mm. in Waterdeep. Uh, I have been so thrilled uh, the last couple of Waterdeep sessions when you did this where you essentially solved problems by – teleporting away or banishing something for me i was just like fuck yeah that's so awesome but also as a gm <laughs> that is kind of like well that that little bit of the problem is it's gone, gone there's yeah. no you know that's like whoo just, just gone or the wish spell you know yeah. like um i think that the wish spell is actually such a good bridge from oh, level 20 into level 21 of like you make a wish the entire world fundamentally changes yeah and maybe monkey's paw style not in the way that you wanted <laughs> yeah but um you know i i i love sidestepping issues like that um it's really more of a caster thing than it is a material or a martial thing rather and um but at the same time it's just like okay so you don't want to do that what do you want to do now like yeah i um i think also like a, a pitfall that i just came up with thinking about mm -hmm. what you were saying is treating your players and like asking them the questions that you asked them when they were level 10. Yep. Like these people are way more powerful, way more influential, way more like when you get to this place, you get what you want. You know what mm. I mean? So it's not a question of like, what are you, what are you wanting to do right now? It's I'm more talking like, about like your player characters and I could be that person, but I would, Oh God, I just hate the fact that, Oh, I'm so powerful. I can just have whatever I want as a concept. I'm, I'm mad the, at these imaginary people. <laughs> oh, Geo, like what I'm saying though, is that, that is the point of a, uh, this level of play of like people groups of people are like what assholes they just like took over the, like maybe the the characters like we had to banish all magic from this le like this area because it was opening a wormhole that would swallow the world but then all of the people in that Fucking area are fascist. like i can't i can't <laughs> use magic anymore why do you get to tell me how to yeah. live my life kind of yeah. thing and those are the the questions i think you stumble into in this yeah. level of play mm -hmm. rather than uh you need to get into a castle uh, how do you want? How do you yep. want to like think? It's more like how do you deal with your successes? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, the thing that I sighed uh, about uh, just now has nothing to do with any of this. Do you want to hear about it anyway? <laughs> yeah, sure. absolutely. This will be a great way to close out the episode. <laughs> so, so the monkey's paw thing. The thing I hate about Wish is actually that I'm really bad with coming up with like monkey paw things. Mm -hmm. I just thought of one for the thing that my characters, my players wished for in the last time they were able to wish for something. They won a wish in a breakdancing battle mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and they were very nice about it and they wished for the final component of the antidote that they needed, which was the eye of a tiger. Yeah. It, it, it is a, it's a joke. Yes, yeah. it, is a, it is a joke. It's intentional. Um, no, but I know what the I know what the problem, the, the monkey paw is here. I just thought of it. Yeah. <laughs> You get the eye of a tiger, but it's your eye. Yeah. Oh, yeah. what? I thought. Oh. I just thought you were gonna summon a tiger into out. existence. Then you gotta get fight. its eye out. Yeah. So you have to pluck out your own eye. That's yeah. That, yeah. Of course. I mean, huh. do, do you remember when Greg had that wish thing, and I totally fucked him over on that? What That's was how it? I think you should oh, always it was, use. It wish. was during the Tomb of Bill annihilation. Yeah, when he was like, "Man, I wish my sword was fixed," and I was like, "Okay." <laughs> what like, happened? Well, it was just because he had like a wish ring. He did wasn't like I want to use my wish ring, and this is what I wish oh, for. Oh, oh, he just oh, said see, in see. conversation, oh, "I wish just, my sword was better." Yeah, and yeah, I was like, "You have a better sword." Up. Well, and I, that's how I would actually do it. Like if they prepare wish, that it's not sort of like an active cast. It is, man, I wish for this. Your spell slot, your spell slots go. You wish for that sandwich. You have a sandwich, and no, now but, you can't yeah. use wish again. Or yeah, whatever. I mean, I'm just. I was just thinking about how bad I am at the monkey paw thing. Yeah, yeah. it's just like. It's so hard to because it's like it's always like, oh, I get a wish. I'm going to wish now. I'm like, fuck. 
It's like, can we take an hour break so I can think of a really good yeah. monkey paw for this? My yeah. fiance's dad, uh, and she told me like when she was a little kid, uh, he would play this with her all the time. And I think it's a, such a great game. It's called Evil Wizard. Mm-hmm. And he, you would say, all right, try to tell me a wish that you have in a way where I can't turn it against you, essentially. <laughs> and so like, I wish for a million dollars. Okay, you have a, a million dollars, but they uh, are, you know, somewhere that you can never use them kind of thing uh, or it's a million he, monopoly dollars yeah exactly or like yeah, yeah, okay yeah. i want um like a thousand quarters in my house uh uh on my bedroom that i can spend and it's like okay um but all the quarters are in your house on your bed and they can never be moved or something like that they all like, like weigh a million yeah pounds. exactly so uh, like that is the game that they would play um, that's a, that, a i should i should play that so i can get practice yeah, so get the <laughs> monkey paw. Can, I, can i help your monkey paw situation I mean, it's too late but yes go no, ahead it's not huh what they do they got a tiger's eye right well yeah and they used it already uh-huh. created there's the book. a tiger kin that's like I'm there's a, a rakshasa out yeah. there Ooh. that is missing an eye huh and is pissed off about that yeah. there's a you rakshasa love in the game. rakshasas the long yeah. Yeah, the, the long burn hespero is in the game yeah. i don't know if they've seen him yet yeah, yeah. Sen- i don't know him. if they've seen him since that yeah. okay well, you could just be like, even the Rakshasa doesn't know, but is like looking into it. And so they meet Hespro again and he's missing an eye. Yeah. And they're like, uh, and he's like, yeah, I'm trying to find uh, That's really fun. Yeah, man. <laughs> Have they seen him Nothing is sense? ever, even if even if they had, it's another Rakshasa. Like there, there's yeah, nothing yeah. ever it's too fucking late. <laughs> yeah, it's the Bakasura. Ah, yeah, there's nothing yeah. ever so too much late scarier, for that shit. To be honest. <laughs> Bakasura would be, for, for context, uh, Hespero is a crime lord, Rakshasa, uh, masquerading as a human. The Bakasura was like his enforcer lieutenant who yeah. was way more bloodthirsty yeah, uh-huh. um, and and genuinely a threat in ways that That'd Hespero be... was not. Hespero plays the con. Because mm-hmm. it's also like maybe like Hespero, like uh, the Bakasura knows who it was, but like Hespero, if they're still on good terms with him. He's been like, hey, man, like, chill out. These guys are yeah. with me. But as soon as they go against, like, they should be like, no, I'm not going to do that for you. He's like, okay. And the box store is like, crack. Yeah. And this is also fun uh, for ending high-level play is things that they did in the campaign earlier. Oh, yeah. yeah. Picking yeah. Right. And now it's a chance to, like, bring those consequences always be back that. later. Yeah. Hold Absolutely. on to those threads. But yeah. that's, it, yeah. And, and this is, like, that low, that end fourth tier play is where what threads have when we wrapped up yeah wrap them up now yeah. this is the yeah. time um and go ahead and slow down the level progression at that point yeah. um, milestone. you know move it to milestone if you weren't already on there or just reduce all the xp they receive by half yeah <laughs> they yeah. don't need it if you yeah. if you like or that. just make it so that anytime like for them to get a level after 17 which is like the levels that you get at 17 are out of control yeah. so like you have to do something really specific that would change you forever or something yeah. i uh god in a, in a hit homebrew i had borrowing kind of from uh because like i really liked curse of strads the way they did the milestones they uh very nice clear outlining of milestones instead of you finish this chapter which is what most of the books are you finish yeah. this chapter so they gained a level okay fuck off <laughs> um Tell them. I uh, sure. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it, it's so dumb. It's like okay, yeah, you guys get a level, um, but I really like the there are specific quests tied to milestones. Um, yeah, I I did that. I actually gave my group uh so many things. I was like, you get levels from this, and you'll notice there are more than twenty levels here. So if you get to you know through the twenty, and there are more things you're trying to do, there are other things you're gonna get from this. Yeah. Like. I'm going to talk about me for a minute. Uh, why don't we talk about this in the next episode? Bye. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> See, everyone. Oh, my God. <laughs> next Monday for another episode of Tabletops. Bye.